We digest language in a form that ethnically separates us, yet brings us together with a dialect and perspective. This language molds our experiences and ultimately casts what we are able to create. With the blues, Black America created music that was centered around a newfound freedom. But it still came from a place of personal anguish and affliction. Jazz took this concept and amplified the message. The rhythms and the scales of music that developed as part of the Black Atlantic diaspora was really a response to the absence of freedom and the dire need to communicate when freedom of speech was forbidden and celebration of one's culture and one's self-identity was forbidden. It's a, it's a kind of subversive language created uh, out of necessity. Don is exactly right. Mm -hmm. Because where does jazz come from? It comes from the blues. The blues, and, blue, and the blues is that pain, it is that struggle, right? Yeah. But moreover, it's our experience. When Black people created complicated forms of music, it was always passed off of, well, that's just an idiot savant. He just, or she just, is just good at that. But like, we weren't getting the reverence mm -hmm. that we wanted. So jazz became our forum to express our new identity extended from the blues. Jazz really struck me super heavy. In essence, as a music, it, it, is, it is improvisation. And for that to be the very thesis of the music of jazz, I think is super, super important. You know, improv is freedom. It is connecting outside, like, you know, the spiritual aspect of, of music, um, the spiritual aspect of energy in general. Um, and I feel like that's when you're taking it to the highest of highs with music expression. It's the, it, jazz is the beacon for us all because there was a time when we were afraid to say exactly how we felt, but with instruments, you could break rules. Yeah. One of the surprising things I heard about early jazz in Tussauds was a, a this, this guitar player out of uh, this jazz guitar player out of Oakland said he was really upset at James Brown because they stopped playing these the four bar or two bar loops on guitar. And I was really surprised to hear that because I, you know, I think everything of James Brown, and I didn't never, I didn't never thought about James Brown. So interrupted jazz. So interrupted jazz. What do you feel about that? I think that it made it so people who felt that jazz was just too deep, too intellectual to really grasp. Um, and for the, the comfort of finding something easier to just deal with it, considering what life was, you know, we overcoming obviously slavery and we're in another area of oppression. And I think it allowed for people to just celebrate a little bit differently. I felt like you have people sitting back at home watching all these doo-wop groups and going like, we don't want to tap dance no more. We don't want to feel like that. We want to feel like we feel. I don't think soul could have been as good if people didn't have the skills that jazz players had. It's easy for them to play an eight bar loop, but at the same time what they're playing this eight bar loop is so funky and so soulful that it, it hurts. Even it was simple for them, like even with Motown, like the musicians were pretty much laughing at playing the Motown music because they were really, really great jazz musicians. So, you know, to play, you know, ABC, they were like, this is like a joke to us. But to us, we was like, dang, dang, dang. I completely get the point with the Jacksons and, you know, just things being more lighter and more fun, you know, and that's always a good thing. But in, in addition to that, you know, we also had the Temptations. You know, we had Marvin Gaye. Right. You know, we had Curtis Mayfield. Right. We had the amazing visionary Stevie Wonder. Right. It's interesting what you said because earlier in their career, they weren't as crass or brazen in talking about the struggle, uh, especially Curtis Mayfield with Impressions. Uh, and then you have Marvin Gaye from I Heard It Through the Grapevine to 
what's going on, you know? So these genres evolve to the point where we are really saying exactly what we feel. Our music is changing the way the world looks at us. That music was really the music of the movement. When you think about what's going on, that lyric, it's just, I can hear it in my head like it was the first time I ever heard it. It sticks with you. But Randy, how does this actually stick with you, being somebody that came from the South, somebody that came from the birthplace of the blues? Music was so rich, so ethnically rich. Because you got Zydeco, Louisiana's own thing, Dixieland, Louisiana's own thing. You had traditional jazz bebop. You had jazz fusion. You had rock. You had country. You had soul, R&B. You had, you name it. One thing that really intrigues me about an artist like Yola is that she found a connection to Blackness through sound. Well, when it comes to my blackness, that's something that just jumps out of my mouth. It's there when I wake up, it's there when I go to sleep. My blackness is, I grew up in a seaside town, okay? Isolated blackness. <laughs> Soul music was my community. And the diaspora was my community. That connection to the music that I've been raised on, the music that has come before me, like all of that, like, is a connection to the diaspora. Soul is our conduit to the past because I view it as our ancestors speaking through us. Mm. I would attribute soul music to the sounds coming from a people, a person um, who has experienced some oppression, who has experienced not being heard, who has experienced, um, you know, not knowing where to turn and or go to, ref you know, to 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 observe a reflection of themselves that is, you know, you know, their like God, right, or source. I think the most important thing is on obviously like soul as a genre we're students of that for life you know we're, we're still discovering music that we haven't heard we're still learning how to be better and honor that tradition but then also uh making sure that it actually comes from our soul you know ali we've traveled many places around the world mm -hmm. and something that we love just as much as we do records are instruments mm -hmm. and every time i see you buy an instrument it's it's like it's speaking to you oh Absolutely, I cannot go home with an instrument unless it, it speaks to me. When you pick up one instrument, it may not speak to you. You know, it may have a, a feeling and you can you feel like, okay, I understand how to play the instrument, but it doesn't really talk to you. For an example, guitars are made from wood. Wood are trees, you know? Trees have uh, a network underneath the ground that connects one tree to another through its roots. And it is the same with, with our music. That's crazy because there is this nexus, this connection. You could pick up this guitar, this bass, and it speaks to you in a way that nothing else will. Yeah. But what you're basically saying, it's that your soul is connecting to that instrument. And now the soul is making music. Mm -hmm. The music is always the music. The music is, is all spiritual and all ultimately kind of leads you to feel something. And that is the point of music to me is to provoke some sort of emotion. If black music is the soul of America, jazz music is the fight for our freedom. It's the rejection of every boundary that tried to box us in our own form of classical music that proved we are intelligent. That we are human. It amplified our voice of dissonance with hope and posterity. R&B further intensified our message with an explicitness that we never had. But hip hop proved that our souls had much more to say about the conscious state of America. <laughs>